Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. We are here in The Hague in the Netherlands at the SDN and NFE World Congress and I'm talking with Don Clark who is Principal Architect of Network Technologies at Cable Labs. Don, great to see you again. Hello again, Martin. It's a gloomy morning but we shall have an entertaining chat. Um, let's begin with this. We've known each other for a long time and we saw NFV coming together as it, as it were. Um, it's five years since the first NFV white paper was released. In your view, where are we in terms of the viability of the technology and its adoption by CSPs? I've just been in a um, keynote by Colt. Um, and uh, yesterday I heard from Neil McRae and BT, my former, my former family of BT. And both of them are talking about programmable networks and both of them are talking about the customer experience improvement that's been delivered by, by, by as Neil puts it, programmable networks. What he really means is NFE and SDN. So as far as I'm concerned, the operators are now talking about real launch, they're talking about customer experience. And um, so that's what we set out to do and it's, and it's, and it, and it's happening and, and, you just, and the evidence is right there. If you remember when everything started, there was this huge wave of enthusiasm and the usual hype cycle kicks in with everything as it does anything to do with telecoms and so on. Now, there's a, there has been a feeling that, it, that NFV has taken longer to come to fruition than people thought it might. Personally, I don't necessarily agree that's the case. What do you think? Well, telecoms is a long game. Yeah. I mean, Alexander Graham Bell, I mean, how long ago was that? Um, <laughs> well, he's older in, than me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in telecoms for, can you believe, nearly 45 years. And I've seen in, in most of that time in R&D, but I did spend four years very enjoyably in, uh, in BT's uh, operating division doing 21st century network, if you remember those days. I do, but very, uh, very well. Yeah, and, and it's, it, I'm always surprised how long it takes. I'm this kind of like guy that sets out and says, you know, we, this, is the, this is the answer. You know, we've got the next generation of technology already, and, and it's 10x faster, or it's, you know, it, it, it does so much more than the current one. Why don't we deploy it now? And so that's what my, I always take this mindset that it, it, that it's obvious. It's obvious that this is the next generation technology, but the realities are that you're talking about massive scale deployments in telecoms. And it's not just massive scale as in volumes, it's massive scale as in geography, right? So we're not just talking about Google updating a data center with a few more servers. We're talking about rollout to millions of physical endpoints. Indeed. Or tens of thousands of nodes. So in the telecoms game, you talk about very large investments. And once you make those investments decisions, you then follow through with the engineering that will be necessary to make those systems reliable and deliver services to customers that you absolutely guarantee will work. And, and it's not a best efforts game. And regulators sit there omnipresently looking at what you're doing and figuring out how you could uh, you know, make things more competitive, and so we have to be really careful uh, about making sure that those systems deliver what um, you know, the, the regulators want, the governments want, the country wants. So that's a long-term game. And, and so f I guess five years, in my experience, is about half as long as it normally takes. Well, funny you should say that, Don, because we were chatting last night over a beer, talking about exactly this. And a decade seems to be the norm for everything in telecoms, always. So yeah. five years, we're halfway through the cycle, as it were. We are, but it takes... People say, well, Don, you, why didn't you start five years later? <laughs> well, it's... <laughs> yeah. but you started too early. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Well, you have to start. <laughs> Somewhere. You know, point A yeah. is the beginning of, of, of the 10-year cycle. Precisely. If you wait five years, point A is going to be in 50... You know, is five years late. So I always look at this as saying, you know, it doesn't matter when you start you bring forward the time that the technology becomes mainstream. And I think you're completely right. We're about halfway through. Um, I think if I sat there while Uwe Mika was presenting the white paper here five years ago, and I was in the audience um, very proudly watching Deutsche Telekom use their authority in their country to deliver this thing, um, I was, if I'd said, well, in five years' time, I will be here still talking about it <laughs> in the same role except in a different job um, yeah. and in a different country I would have been really surprised but then if but now I'm not surprised they, then I would have been surprised but now I'm not surprised 
Ultimately, the transformation journey that we are five years into is about CSPs being able to deliver a better customer experience. That's the, 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 the end point of it all. How are SDN and NFV going to help them to gain the best possible insight into the current and future needs of customers? Who are the ones who in the end will pay for all this? Well, one of the benefits that we thought of in, in uh, our original discussions around this programmability of networks or NFV was that you could rapidly test and validate new um, services, yeah. and that's the, the whole point. I've been through many generations of technology uh, innovation in my roles in BT and now in Cable Labs, and the, one of the first things we always did was do a technical trial, right? So we do the labs, we do the uh, validation of the technology, does it really work? Um, and then you say, well, okay, well, how does it work in the real world? But we're not quite ready to put real customers on yet. So let's do a technical trial. In BT, we did technical trials with employees, for example. Well, I tell you, I mean, I, I was responsible for delivering a fiber to the um, premises trial um, in BT once I moved for, out of R&D. It's really hard. Even a technical trial with 100 customers on it is really hard because you have to physically locate the equipment. Now imagine that you've got broadband connectivity now to a, a, an NFV or a programmable node. Now you, you, you press a few buttons and you've delivered a completely different service experience. So that's what I'm excited about, that once we, we have these, these uh, platforms in place, you can do rapid trials to any numbers of customers um, very quickly. Okay. What else do you think needs to change to ensure you can provide customers with the best possible experience? So adjuncts in and around SDN and NFV, what is it else that's required? Well, I think it depends what the customer is. So if, it, if it's a consumer, then you don't talk about any technology at all. It's whatever the, the, the experience is. Yeah. But, but new generations, including you and I, we expect pretty much instant download of whatever it is we want to use. Sure. Um, so you know, the, the app experience is pretty much what, uh, um, what we, we, we envisaged uh, in the original discussions that, that, that we had. I mean, my, my colleague Peter Willis, for example, came up with the idea in BT of, of an app store, uh, and Neil uh, talked about it yesterday for real. And, I, and actually, thinking about it, five years on, we, we, a, a concept is actually real. And that's the app store, the idea that, um, uh, for example, an enterprise can can configure its own service yeah. based on functions that are, are literally assembled and downloaded to the infrastructure from an app store. So if you're an enterprise experience, and uh, that, that's really important. And in fact, uh, uh, Mirko from Colt talked about this idea that, that you can offer customers a lot of flexibility is, is actually great from your perspective, but the customers are a bit, you know, a, a bit sort of rabbits in the headlights. They've got all these dials they could tune and they don't really know how to do that. And that reminded me of, a, of, a, of a, a talk I heard about a year ago from a colleague in Time Warner Cable who said exactly the same thing. He said, we've got um, you know, SD-WANs launched, and the surprising thing for us was the customer is a bit scared to turn the knob. They just don't know what to do with the flexibility. So I think that's another part of the journey is customers will become used to um, programmability and it will become expected, but we're not there yet. We're also starting here, of course, people are talking about what happens after NFV and SDN and how, what's going to happen when all these things are in place. We're hearing more and more and more about machine learning, AI and automation. What do you think these mean in the context of ongoing network transformation and how important are they going to be? Well, we're in the second, the second uh, you know, hype phase of AI. I mean, those of us that have been around a long time, you know, I was at university in the late 1970s, early 80s, and, you know, computer scientists, I did computer systems, you know, as my, as my first degree, and they would talk about AI. Well, we knew it wasn't AI. Mm. Um, it's just a, a good thing. I think we really are now in the realms where there are some elements of intelligence, and I put that in big quotes, around, you know, um, uh, neural networks and the ability to to, to use those kind of techniques to do things, but I think they're very limited at this point in how they can, on the kinds of, of data sets they can really um, generate new insights on. In the network space, clearly the idea that, that you can uh, have surveillance systems that are watching what the network does and over time adapt the network based on the data and the experience that has been learned or acquired. And my problem with that is that where is the data? How do you acquire it? How do you 
uh, burn network capacity just by the telemetry that you're going to need to do machine learning. I'm actually more excited about not so much machine learning applied to networks, but how networks can support machine learning. So the idea, for example, that you could alg have algorithms that are running on a distributed cloud, yeah. where there's an element of compute within the service provider network. So in other words, using the networks to configure networks in a way that is, uh, adds some value to some, I hate to use the word over the top, but some application that runs that is a machine learning application, and now you've configured the network to support that. That's what I think is more interesting. So, Don Clark, what has surprised you most in the five-year journey of NFV so far? The, the diversity of the organizations and people that I, I'm sitting you know, here um, and behind you is a career telecom booth, for example, uh, and just the sheer diversity of people that are here. If you'd come here at this kind of conference five years ago, you would have found a lot less diversity. So that's what I really like about what's happening here. Thank you. If you could borrow the telecom TV time machine, and we keep it locked up most of the time, and change one thing with regard to SDN and FV over the past five years, where would you go and what would you do? Uh, that's a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> uh, oh my goodness, what would I go and what would I do? What would I change? I don't think I'd change anything. Um, honestly, I wouldn't. Uh, I, think, I think that I, with everything I'm seeing happening, I'm just kind of just blown away. Uh, but by what's what's going on, and, and I, I can't imagine. The thing is, you you end up where you you end up here because of a journey that you took, and if you made another decision, you may end up in a different place. Absolutely, and I'm happy with where we are, so I wouldn't change anything. Last but by no means least, what's your prediction for the next five years, given what we've just been talking about? Well, let's all hope we're around, um, <laughs> yes. and uh, and enjoying the job that w that we do. I think five years time, we we won't talk about NFV and SDN. We'll talk about networks that are adaptable and programmable uh, and, and it will be taken for granted. Don Clark, as usual, thanks very much.